Those who were able to maneuver their way down here to, to <laughs> and uh, just like to say for the record, my road hasn't been plowed either. <laughs> According to my husband, neither has mine, but we had a fight about that this morning. <laughs> I am also, but I did manage to get out, thank God. Um, uh, Steve Thompson and Michael Green are here with me. I'm uh, County Councilor Susan Boyle from the 3rd District and Corey Driscoll. Mm -hmm. So we are going to talk about the licensing requirement uh, for plow drivers in the city of Syracuse. I'm just going to open with a little history of how we got here. Uh, recently, I want to thank Corey because I think while bringing the legislation issue to the Common Council was fantastic and I really appreciate that you work so hard to make sure that our ordinance are uh, in line and makes sense and that we're passing good laws and, and changing the fines the way you had projected to us was definitely a good move. Uh, that conversation sort of spurred another conversation amongst the common councilors regarding uh, what the benefit to the city of Syracuse was of having these plow licenses and in conversation uh, at a couple of our more recent committee meetings about the fees and in conversations uh, in the common council we uh, talked a lot about um, whether or not it was necessary for us to charge that and whether or not it uh, was more of a burden to small business than it was a benefit to the citizens of the city of Syracuse. And as far as I could determine, uh, it doesn't appear to be any kind of a necessary benefit to the city, city to, the, to the residents. And so I proposed removing the license requirement uh, in the ordinance mm -hmm. to, the, to the plow drivers. Uh, part of the reasoning behind that, and uh, I'll just tell you where that came from, and I know you have some, some information to show mm -hmm. us. Uh, there's no real educational component to this licensing. Uh, and we have issues with illegal snow placement in the city of Syracuse. We definitely have issues with plow drivers leaving snow on uh, sidewalks or in illegal, you know, in crosswalks and making pedestrian safety an issue, making visibility an issue for drivers. Uh, and we have a law that says that that is not legal. And regardless of whether someone has a sticker on their car or not, that law doesn't really, we, we haven't really mastered enforcing that law. And that law does not, uh, you know, I think we need to work on that law. I think we need to figure out a better way to possibly enforce that law. Um, but currently paying $125 to us and being on a list doesn't necessarily connect us with the actual plow driver that did it. We rarely catch anyone actually in the act of illegally dumping snow. Uh, it's typically we'll find the snow dumped and then try to find out who did it. Uh, however we try to find out who did it, it doesn't really, uh, you know, we'll ask the homeowner, we'll ask the business owner. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether or not they have a sticker again on their car or that they're on a list here at City Hall. That information is still coming from whoever hired them or um, if we happen to catch them in the act. So it kind of goes back to whether or not the community is seeing any benefit from this. Um, in addition to that, I have been contacted by one constituent uh, in the university neighborhood, an elderly woman who was told by her plow company that her price was going to go up for plowing this year because of this fee. And this was after some of the discussions that we had had were in the paper and the plow driver was made aware of it because like we talked about, most people weren't aware that they had to have a plow license before. Uh, so this person became aware of it and had passed along to his customers that their price was going to go up. And I was notified this morning about a company who isn't going to be plowing in the city anymore because they only do, uh, they have a relatively large plow company. They only do a couple of, a uh, couple few driveways in the city every year and it's not worth it for them to pay the money just to come in to do a few properties. Mm -hmm. So uh, in addition to that, small businesses who have one truck and do three or four, three or four driveways if they're going to be required to get this license and then with stiff penalties if they don't, it's, it's going to be difficult for them to, uh, to 
maintain that, and I also have heard from people who have gone out of the plow business because of the expense of doing business. Um, like I said, those are three complaints. It's not a ton of complaints, but that's the, those three separate complaints have come to me. Um, in addition to that, I think that the city of Syracuse needs to really work hard to change the perception that Syracuse is a difficult place to do business. And we also need to provide more opportunities for people to, to do a good, honest day's work. You know, anybody can plow your driveway. You could be a, a, a re-entry person, you know, who comes in from, uh, from prison trying to get, to get, you know, honest work. Uh, you could be a felon. You could be all kinds of things. You never get out of your truck. You just plow the driveway. You know, I, I could handle a felon plowing my driveway, I suppose. Um, so I think that, that it's easier to, uh, to, or better for the city to allow these types of opportunities to be a little bit more accessible and available to, to people as an honest kind of work and to allow people to create that supplemental income source uh, for the many people in the city of Syracuse who work minimum wage jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the city wants that educational component um, to, for the plow drivers to understand the standards to which we want plowing done in the city of Syracuse, but we don't currently have that as part of our, as part of our licensure. So I, I do have a suggestion, and after this I'll stop talking, but I'll let everybody else talk. I do have a suggestion. Uh, what I would like to recommend is that we remove the licensing requirement and instead offer informational seminars for free at all of our community centers in the city and invite all plow operators to come. And if they participate in this educational seminar, we could give them some sort of a certificate and we can list their business uh, on a link on our website with contact information as someone who has agreed to participate to the standards that we're looking for, um, including illegal dumping rules, the illegal dumping rule. And uh, I just feel like something more along those lines would be more beneficial to small business, would create more opportunity, and would uh, increase the number of plowers in the city and lower the cost of plowing for our city residents. So that's basically it in a nutshell. I have a few more things, but I'm going to let other people talk as well. So I want to introduce Joe Driscoll, and uh, I will just uh, turn it over to okay. Corey now, and then we'll go to questions. Is that okay? Yeah. And Councillor Rudd? Oh, and Councillor Rudd, sorry. Sorry I was late. My plow driver didn't have a license. <laughs> I shovel my way out. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to begin by thanking the council for holding the committee meeting. I think that this is an important conversation and certainly a relevant one, made even more apparent by today's snowfall. Um, so just a few points I'd like to begin with. Um, we, as you know, as the administration and me personally, know how important our private snowplow operators are to the city and to our residents. Um, they do a tremendous amount of good work, work that not many others are willing to do. Um, they work in the worst weather at all times of the day, night, weekends, holidays. It's certainly not something, um, it's something I would certainly find challenging and without them obviously much of life in the city would come to a halt. Um, but we do feel that we need uh, the ability to identify areas where performance and adherence to city ordinances can be improved um, and we need the ability to, to use enforcement when necessary. Um, that's why a licensing system makes sense and why we attempted to lower the fees this year based on feedback from these operators to make it easier for businesses to operate. Um, the administration is obviously more than willing to work in partnership with the council to amend the ordinance to craft one that achieves our goal of greater compliance. Um, but we don't believe that eliminating the requirement entirely is the answer. Um, the reality is that the operations of some of our pri private snowplow operators does have an impact on quality of life, a negative one, um, but more importantly, a negative impact on public safety for both pedestrians and drivers. Um, and I just wanted to show you just a couple examples just from this morning of some problematic. Um, so this is a city street um, that the private uh, parking area was cleared and the snow is plowed right into the driving lane um, which forces drivers heading this way to go into the opposite lane. Um, this is another private area that was cleared and the snow was just pushed to the other side of the street completely covering the sidewalk and so 
making it even more difficult for whoever wants to try and shovel that sidewalk. Uh, this is another one where a you know private snow, uh, private parking area was cleared and the snow was just sort of pushed up against the sidewalk. This is another one where there's a large pile um, left on the sidewalk. This is an intersection I'm sure everybody recognizes. There's it's about 10 feet of snow that's just left in the middle of the sidewalk by this private snowplow operator. Um, but I mean, it can be done well. Here's a corner where, where the snow was cleared um, and does allow for pedestrians to, to pass. Um, you know, these photos demonstrate just some of the concerns we're attempting to address through the licensing of private snowplow operators, a requirement that has been in effect since the 1970s. But as I stated, it is a demanding job with its own unique challenges. Um, now, some people will see these photos and say, doesn't the city create the same problems with their own plows? And the reality is, yes, we do, sometimes, unfortunately. And I can say with great confidence that property owners and city residents know exactly who to notify um, in those situations, because they do. Um, they contact us, and we continue to try and work to improve performance wherever we can. And we need to have that same ability with our private snowplow operators. We see this as, as this ordinance as part of a network of snow removal operations and trying to improve them. This works hand in hand with our sidewalk snow clearance program, our efforts there, the GPS units on the snow plows to track where streets um, have been plowed, recommitting our own departments to clearing sidewalks on city owned properties. None of these elements are perfect, um, but together we believe that this can be part of a concerted effort to improve snow removal across the city and really ensure greater safety for our pedestrians and for drivers. Um, I agree that this is an opportunity to take a look at the, at the ordinance, a hard look at the ordinance, and work as partners, the administration, the council, private snowplow operators, um, to work together as partners, not as adversaries. And if we want to have a conversation about the fee, you know, whether we think it's too high or whatever it is, you know, the administration is completely open to that discussion. And to, and to correct the misinformation, I personally didn't raise the fee. We didn't raise the fee. No. The fee, <laughs> the fee was set. Um, so, um, but also, you know, if we want to explore an educational component um, that might result in either the waiver or the reduction of the fee, I think that makes sense. You know, we are looking to have spoken with licensing to post on the website people who have obtained their license. So hopefully we can promote that to, to homeowners so that they're using a company that's abiding by city ordinances. Um, on the broader issue of licensing, um, a list of licenses um, that the city has um, on, our, on our website, you can see, demonstrates that we like to know who's doing business in the city, um, both as a means to ensure compliance with ordinances, rules and regulations, but also as a means to protect homeowners and property owners. Um, there are a number of contractors we license, including electricians, elevator repair companies, um, HVAC and sprinkler contractors. Um, you know, I, I would certainly be open to a comprehensive look at all of our licensing as I saw that, you know, pigeon trapping and roller skating rinks and uh, all those things are, are things that we require licenses for. So I'm certainly open to that conversation of taking a comprehensive look at our licensing, but we really believe that rather than scrapping the requirement altogether, um, that we can work with the council and with businesses to find a solution that works towards our goal of greater compliance. Um, you know, for what it's worth, our licensing application does provide information to snowplow drivers about what city regulations are, so we do try to use that as an opportunity to educate them when they come to pick up the application. Um, but you're right, we haven't mastered enforcing the law. Um, and again, I think this is redoubling our efforts, similar to, you know, I don't know what the operation was for city departments to clear snow from parks and city-owned buildings prior to last winter, but Anecdotally, we did seem to see an improvement um, uh, in clearing that, that, clearing those sidewalks, and I think residents appreciated that. And similarly, we want to try and redouble our efforts here and try to address some of these issues with with compliance of the snowplow operators. Um, you know, we we would like to use this as an opportunity to promote compliant contractors, which I think would be a benefit to homeowners. Um, but there are also resources that we put into tracking down these operators when they don't comply by ordinances. And Lieutenant Schultz is here from, um, from the police department. I know that his team has already gotten a couple calls today about snow that's been dumped in the street or on the sidewalk. So, you know, I, 
certainly understand and appreciate and, and agree with a lot of what has been said. I think it's just rather than scrapping the requirement altogether, can we work together to try and find an ordinance that accomplishes the goal of greater compliance if we don't believe the current one does? Thank you. Corey, I think that the difficult thing I would like explained is we see the photos of that were taken today. How do we connect any of those to a plow driver? Mm -hmm. And does it matter? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this one in particular, um, you know, obviously the- How do we go about connecting that to, you know, if someone has a license or doesn't have a license? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's our, it's our first snowfall, um, but what I would generally do is uh, call the police department, um, identify this as an issue, and then it's my understanding that they could go to the property owner and say, who's your plow service? Um, do they have do they have a license and use that as an opportunity Are to reach we really calling the police because somebody's snow is in the wrong spot they well ordinance enforcement does does lie with community policing now if we want to explore you know expanding that authority to somebody else i'm totally open to that you know i think my point is uh so they call it in we are made aware of the issue and we go to the business owner or the homeowner and we say, who's plowing for you? Mm -hmm. And they tell us, mm -hmm. and then we pursue that business mm -hmm. based on the information that we got from the homeowner. Where does the license requirement fall into that? I mean, we get the information from the homeowner, we pursue them, we don't... The, do, you, you know, do you have a license? Yes, I do have a license. Okay, well, here's a picture of where you just plowed and you, you violated the city ordinance. But if this happens again... know if they have a license? Well, we would look, we would. It's still a violation of the city ordinance. It is, it is. The hundreds way back Yeah, I mean, our licensing office would be able to tell us, yes, they've obtained a license or no, they haven't. I mean, and it. No, they, we would know, we could know by asking them or we could look at their truck at the sticker. We could find out if they have a license or not, which would mean we could additionally find them more, or I don't know. But really, the point is we need to find out who's doing it and we'll, we'll pursue them. We'll pursue them whether they have a license or not. Mm -hmm. We will. So I'm just trying to figure out the the benefit. I'm not trying to argue. I'm no, no, no. To draw a connection. I, I want to see a benefit to the license. I would say, you know, the, the enforcement tool it gives us is that if they're repeat offenders, they have a license, yet they keep violating the city ordinance over and over again, then we pull their license and say, you can't do business in the city because you can't comply by the ordinances. Same as we would, you know, we issue licenses for businesses. Um, we issue licenses for, you know, hot dog cart vendors. I mean, that with the expectation that, you know, there are resources that go into having those services available, tracking down people who are not compliant, and, you know, if someone just continuously over and over again keeps um, violating city ordinances, obviously we can ticket them for that, but as a, an additional enforcement tool, we can take their license away to say, you're, you know, you are not permitted to be conducting business in the city of Syracuse. You don't have a license anymore because we revoked it because you can't follow the rules. They already don't have a license. Is there a, Well, I mean, then we would, if, you know, I would say, you know, I don't want to speak for the police department, but my guess is that they have a lot more conversations with people than they do actually issue tickets. I don't think we're going ticket happy. Okay. Um, but is there a fine or a fee in the ordinance for someone who's plowing in the city without a, or if you... Yeah, they, they, with a revoked license? I mean, they would be plowing without a license, which the fine would be $350, which would be the same if you never got a license at all. But there's not a specific, there's not an additional fine for someone with an actual revoked license? No, no, not a specific fine for that. So you want to get some questions, uh, Joe? We'll go around the table. Um, so do we have any idea what compliance level is at this point? I mean, it's... It, you know, it is difficult because there was so much misinformation out there. I know that we, you know, um, once the word got out there that we were doing this, uh, I think we received maybe 30 license applications um, last year, and so we issued those licenses. So, but I'm hoping by, you know, and this is all part of a process of, like I said, to try and improve our snow removal operations. So we don't expect overnight that every single snowplow operator privately is going to flood into City Hall to get a license, but this is part of our drumbeat that we keep about pedestrian safety, about public safety, about driver safety, about complying with ordinances, so that's okay. I'm anticipating from the phone calls and the attention that it's gotten this year that we'll probably 
my guess would be we get an increased number of licenses, but it's tough to know the universe of people who are plowing in the city. Okay, so there's no real rough estimate? No, I don't think so. Could I, would it be all right, uh, Lieutenant Schultz? Sure. Can I hear from you? Is that okay? No, it's okay with me. Just give me a little time. I threw my back on yesterday. <laughs> Were you shoveling? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, but I shoveled today with the bad back. Yeah. Well, um, that's, how, that's how Larry Bird, you know, ended up in all that trouble. <laughs> um, I don't know that I have a lot to add. I think that the one benefit um, that maybe didn't get mentioned yet is the licensing would allow that sticker to go on the side of a truck, which would be... You know, I don't know what level of uh, additional help that provides, but I do know that when we, we do get these calls, the police do get called for these a lot, um, and it's often hard to see their, their plate because of the snow. It's, it's black or brown or covered with snow, and so it, I haven't seen one of these placards yet, but I assume that it would be easier to spot and identify the truck than the plate itself would be. Um, that being said, whatever you guys decide, we're prepared over an ordinance to handle uh, the licensing if, that, if that's what is going to happen. Um, we did write, it was not popular to write a lot of these tickets prior to the second half of the winter when the mayor took over, but I know that we did change our, our, uh, our enforcement slightly and we wrote more tickets in the spring, uh, as the spring started to come to fruition, our kind of spring. Um, and then I assume this year we would pick up the same. So uh, unless you have an, an individual question for me. I do. Did you write more tickets for illegal dumping or for unlicensed plow drivers? Well, luckily I didn't write any of those tickets. <laughs> uh, so I don't know the, the actual numbers, but I believe that we have three pre-printed informations. Uh, one deals with a contracted uh, plow, and one deals with an uncontracted plow, and I, I think the majority of the tickets written were for pushing the snow into the road or onto somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. So I'm understanding that the sticker that says that you have a license goes on the windshield, which is what I was told. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but um, I would imagine. It seems to, maybe we could change yeah. that if we want to yeah, keep yeah, it, yeah. but it doesn't seem to me like that would be much more visible than any other than a license plate oh, in the snow. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. And the police have to pull people over based on their license plates anyway, and it's illegal to have a covered license plate. It is illegal for that, yes. Um, when you say you get a lot of calls, the bulk of the calls are that, just people, plow drivers pushing their snow onto someone else's property? Is that when you say you get a lot of calls regarding these? In issues? regards to plowing itself, it would be people who had the snow put on their property or across the street in front of their property. Sometimes it, the, the piles are in the street, but they prevent you from getting in and out of your driveway easily, and that's a big complaint. Um, the other complaint we get is obviously uh, the people that is a parking complaint, people that prevent our plows from getting through the streets. Uh, which wouldn't be related to the <coughs> contractor plows. I just want to make sure we're not crossing lines here because we have the licensing and then we have the law about illegal dumping, and they're not really the same thing. They're separate things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we, can, we will always have this law for illegal dumping, and we will always pursue a better way to enforce that law. I'm just, the question today is whether licensing helps that at all. Or yeah. And, and to that um, to that point, like I guess I was kind of thinking of, um, you know, the law that we passed earlier in the year uh, about dogs being left out. You know, um, it's not really suspected that we'll go after every single dog that's left out for more than thirty-five minutes. That we won't spend police resources tracking down. And I feel like, but it becomes a useful tool when you're in that situation for the officers to apply extra you know to imply enforcement that was beforehand unable to be applied do you as an officer who deals with some of these i mean do you deal with these kind of things or talking with the other officers does does the force have a particular stance on the licensing do you, would it be a helpful tool uh you know we, we had the officers that dealt with dog enforcement say you know because people were saying to a similar um conversation like we're having now that obviously it's not going to be able to be enforced You're not going to be able to stop every single plow that's going around in Syracuse and stop them and ask them for their license but it it being an extra tool to help you guys doing your job with ticketing do you feel the license would be helpful or yeah I, I definitely think it provides an advantage as far as enforcement um, but I do agree I don't know that 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 advantage equals what you're discussing with uh, 
the benefit to the city and whether or not plow operators are going to refuse to come into the city or raise their prices. So I think there is a minimal advantage to it. Anything that we regulate gives us more control over it. So I think that control is helpful. Um, and then obviously I'm not part of the argument as to whether or not that measures up against the other right, benefits right, or lack the thereof. The pros and cons, yeah. So I, I, I happen to live next to a plow operator and I know his plan is to not come into the city anymore. Um, he operates just two trucks. Uh, but he's concerned also about those rates and so, you know, I think you have a juggling match to kind of figure out. Yeah, which, you know, like I said, we're completely open to having a new discussion about the rates. It's just that was the rate set in 2014 and so barring any feedback from it, we didn't, you know. It was a new conversation, like yeah. I said. It was brought to light. So yeah, absolutely. So, that. no, we're completely open to, you know, re-examining the fee structure if we think it's too high. But I, I still, the, the logic, you can go ahead if we're going in this order thing. Mm -hmm. Corey, do we have yes. the ability to find property owners? Yes, yes, there is also um, a segment in the ordinance that does allow us to, um, to find property owners as well. Because to me, understand this is like an issue of externality where someone's doing something that's impacting their neighbor and there, there needs to be a role of government to step in and prevent that, and I understand that. But it seems to me it would be a lot easier to track down the property owner than the plow driver, mm -hmm. right? And and I, I suspect that if, you know, those pictures, if you find the property owner there, very quickly he'd make a call to his plow driver and say, hey, I just got a $100 fine. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? You can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And that might be a more efficient route. So I'm just kind of curious your feedback on... Yeah, I'm, I think, you know... Um, for situations like this, I, I think the more enforcement tools that we have that are he all headed towards the same goal, the, the better, it, better it would be. Because I can imagine, um, you know, perhaps for a business, we would love to hit them with the fine to say, you're a business and you should know better and you should get your, um, your operator to abide by ordinances. I could also see we issue a fine to a senior citizen who's on limited income, who doesn't control their plow operator, and then we get calls saying, that's not fair, you should be punishing the person who's actually breaking the ordinance. And so, to me, the, the, vari the more opportunities we have for enforcement to, um, to address, you know, the various situations, the better, the more flexibility we have, the better. Can I make a recommendation along that line? Mm -hmm. um, maybe a warning to homeowners that mm -hmm. if it had, you know, that they, it, on the next time they're caught, they will be fined. Um, and that way the homeowner can alert the plow driver mm -hmm. to that, or a warning, you know, of some way or another, like it could be a double whammy. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, and again, not to speak for the police, but as someone who, files these um, complaints a lot, you know, it's my understanding that it usually starts with a conversation. I know, um, you know, there's uh, some properties along East Genesee Street where I know a lot of students walking to Nottingham pass by the gas station and the dry cleaners and enormous piles of snow. And, you know, I know SPD went out to have a conversation with those property owners. I don't think a ticket was Why issued. Why do we need SPD to have the conversation? Like, if we don't talk to each other in the city, you then know like, what? what is the... Point. Well, I think me walking in and saying, hey, you should really fix your snowplow operator if I were wearing a uniform, I think would be just a little bit more effective. So it's hard to talk about this without veering into this uh, illegal dumping law that needs to be discussed probably separately. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we need to have a meeting maybe again about what we're going to do about enforcing this dumping law. But we have to stay sort of on track for purposes that we're here today, which is whether or not having this license benefits us in any way, helps us to somehow uh, connect the license with the pile of snow, you know, that's... And how does that compare to the burden that we And maybe we talk at another meeting it. about how um, this dumping thing, you know, who should be fined, who should be, you know, how we need to change that. Um, but I would like to make sure we stay on track with the actual benefit of the license and the fine and, and that today. Sure. So I'm going to go around. We got a... Uh, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I guess what I'm getting from this then is whether or not we consider it uh, a business to plow. Is it a part-time, uh, anybody can do it, or is it a business? And if it's a business, then I think the city has uh, an obligation to regulate um, it, to make sure that it's 
that the business owner uh, has insurance, that the business owner has licensed uh, um, drivers, and that the business owner makes sure that the, uh, the, that the uh, um, vehicles are in, in repair that uh, aren't going to break down in the middle of the street and anything else. Um, so if uh, one of the things is, is to look at is that, and, and I know there's, there are uh, some, several counselors have expressed concern relative to the fact that if um, it's, it's like mowing grass, somebody can go out and just mow three or four or five yards, make a couple of bucks, it's a part-time gig, uh, that's fine. But if it's, if it's considered a business, I think we have an obligation to regulate it. If it's not a business, if we're saying that, uh, uh, that, it's not, that we're not considering a business, then it's a different, in a different standard. Yeah, I, I would argue too, that I don't know that mowing grass poses um, challenges to pedestrians and public safety. Steve, all of those things are regulated by the state of New York traffic law already mm -hmm. and enforced by the Syracuse City Police Department. Yes, but that, that would be an uninsured, unlicensed. But that would be like saying, then we take away the taxi drivers, and you don't have to have them regulate. Why, why regulate but no, them? No, we don't have an obligation to regulate all business. Like if I have a business tutoring kids in math, you don't need to regulate my business tutoring kids. No, in math. No, but you you do if it has an impact on the on the public, and this has an impact on the public. Now, the, the, to draw the line from the business to the snow removal and and the the uh, concerns about leaving the snow. Um, on the sidewalks or plowing that's it in, you know, that's a separate, I understand that. So the question becomes, if this is a, uh, an issue that where public safety is, is an, um, it's necessary to regulate the operators of a business, that's all. So. And, and I get that. I guess my issue is to sort of echo what Councillor Boyle had pre has already previously stated. How are the two related? What are we specifically doing today with that license? Are we tracking? What property, if I'm, you know, Joe Snowplow and I have my business, mm -hmm. do I have to uh, give you a list of everyone that I'm plowing? And then we're able to track and say, okay, 115 Sheck Ave, Joe Snowplow went there, he's the snowplow driver, and the guy across the street has a mountain of snow on their front lawn, mm -hmm. and Joe's driveway's clear. Mm -hmm. Do we actually have that, and do we do that? If we do not do that, then I do not understand why we have this license, because from my point of view where I sit, if we're not doing anything with it, we're just collecting a fee and making it more difficult to do business in the city. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I guess it boils down to. Now, when we came up and we altered this, and again, I said it before, I voted against it, but I applauded the administration for actually taking on something that actually needed to be looked at. I just don't believe that we took a good enough look at it at the time. Mm -hmm. That was uh, my issue then, it's my issue now. I think if we're going to go ahead and say we're going to uh, change the fee, change the fine, then we need to actually go through and look at the ordinance as a whole of what we're doing and how it fits in with what the council and the administration would like to do going forward. And I don't think we did that. Mm -hmm. I think we just simply changed one part of it and left a bad ordinance on mm -hmm. the books. Yeah, I mean, I'm completely open to, I mean, it's it's a difficult um, time frame. You know, we, we made a commitment to stepping up enforcement last winter and then found out couple weeks in that nobody knew you're supposed to have this license so then we thought well that's unfair to really come down hard on snowplow operators um, so you know we'll try to have more conversations we won't ticket everybody you know but we'll try to raise awareness um, you know this is our today is our first snowfall so you know I don't feel like we've really had enough time to demonstrate um, a way that this ordinance could work better towards compliance I you know um, it could be more effective than it is right now. And like I said, I think we're completely open to taking a hard look at the ordinance and figuring out what makes sense to get to, to better com compliance. But you know, to Councillor Thompson's point, this is a business. It does have a significant impact on public safety and pedestrians and all these things that we're trying to prioritize with our snowplow operations. And I just don't believe that eliminating the requirement altogether because it's not working in its current state when we haven't really had enough time to try and improve it and tweak it to make it work, I just don't think that's the answer. Yeah, so the like pictures you just showed, right? So what would be our next step, you know, once we have that information? I mean, uh, do you call the property owner and say, who's your snowplow operator, hypothetically? Mm -hmm. And then I guess the logic would be that, well, if they're registered, then we have the contact information to contact them. 
but even if they're not registered, mm -hmm. probably the property owner should have contact information for their snowplow operator Correct. anyway. Yes. Right. So that's one of the things that I don't know that we're what we're gaining necessarily. So, mm -hmm. um, but and then my other thing too is I, I'm sympathetic to someone that might just be a customer that has like a rogue snowplow operator, and but that's their responsibility as a property owner to hold them accountable, and right. whoever owns this property is choosing to inconvenience their neighbors rather than hold their snowplow operator accountable. And and I think that as a city, when we don't hold property owners accountable and we say, you're just a victim of this, then this is the result you get. And so I, I would just say it's going to be a lot easier to enforce property owners who then can hold their actual, you know, operator that they're paying accountable mm -hmm. than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Well, say if it's like, you know, um, I'm thinking, you know, some 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 of the elderly ladies in my district that are from a low income background, and they hire someone to do that, and then we hit them with a two hundred dollar fine for, I mean, well, or you can they, hit their plow hire, driver with a three hundred and fifty dollar license, and they can pass it on to them anyways. Yeah. What's that? You can you well make their plow uh, one you're yeah, but one well, we, uh, getting some of the facts on this, like the it for a law for a. A plow person to charge someone for a driveway, how much is that a season? We're talking like four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars, four hundred to five hundred dollars. So you're talking about if they're doing ten houses, it's one half of one of those houses. So like the idea that they have to bump everyone's fee by twenty five dollars seems Well, that's, the, that's if crazy. they're doing ten that's houses. Because you do twenty you, and they houses. usually plow twenty no, times, twenty to twenty five times a year. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, there's also just a, I, I get I get it, but there's I'm just saying that there's there's push and shove on. Well, Joe, it's not whether or not it's an inconvenience to the company necessarily, even though we've heard that it is. It's also what are we getting for this 100? What what is this? How is the community benefiting from this 125 dollar fee that we're passing along to these businesses? I guess my thought would be everybody's spending time and resources chasing down these plow people, right? So like. Um, this goes to enforcement. I mean, I, don't, I think back to Steve's point. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to argue one way or the other, but tacking it to the property has its own set of problems is all I was trying to illustrate. If, if, I, if I have constituents who call me and go, I hired this guy to do my driveway and he pushed the snow into my neighbor's yard and now I've got a $150 ticket. Do you think that's fair? Well, but that's, not, that's, what we're, same that's thing. not really what oh, no, we're no, talking but then, about. But it, was, but it was brought up, and I understand exactly. I'm just, I'm just trying to say that arguing against that. For every, for, every, for every solution, there's a new set of problems. So yeah. that's, that's all I'd say. I, I, it's hard not to talk about that problem when we're talking about this problem. And if they were better married, maybe we could talk about you know, the impact that licensing has on I mean, like, who gets a ticket. But that's not what we're not even talking about that ordinance. We're talking about the licensing ordinance. I guess my other question would be, and again, I know we're getting into the weeds a little bit with this, but how do we know who's actually doing it as a business and who's just doing it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I have a neighbor that just does it for people in the neighborhood. Just yeah, if they're not for hire, then they're not. Yeah, but that, well, and we would get them with the ticket. to be made that I could slap a plow on my car and just go around and start doing it, saying, "No, I'm just doing it for people." And right. I mean, you know, and I, I don't. Like I said, I don't imagine every electrician who does work in the city is licensed by the city, but there is, but we do think it's, you know, it's important that we know what electricians are doing business and we encourage homeowners as a protection for them that here's one way to make sure that you have someone who's reputable. Do they have a city license? Um, I hope that all of our elevator, elevator repair companies have licenses. Um, I hope nobody's doing that on the fly. But... Um, doesn't the state regulate them? Too? I mean, there's like other regul. We don't know. The city is not an island. To I mean, itself if, where we have to right. If we, if own. I mean, if we want to get into a philosophical conversation about licensing, you know, running red lights and speeding is against the law. We still require driver's licenses so that the person is educated on what the rules are and we know who they are. Yeah, but do we give a snow plow driver a driver's test? Do you have to come? No, but we make sure they have insurance. We make sure they have. License. We make sure they have workers' comp. We make sure that their license, their vehicle is registered. We do try to ensure that there's some element of safety, given the impact that these operators have on public safety. I mean, and, and you know, and it's it's the currently, you know, if the fee were to remain where where it is, that would be the cost of doing business in the city. Um, you know, again, if we want to talk about the fee. 
I'm, we're totally open to talking about it. Um, but you know, we we require restaurants to get business licenses. I mean, their licensing is something that we do to try and ensure that there's some element of we know who you are, we know that you're safe in what you're doing, and that you understand the rules, and we can hold you accountable if you're unable to to follow city ordinances or state laws or whatever it is to make sure that we don't have disreputable people doing business in the city. Right. Some of those licenses make more sense than other licenses, you know. Some I'm a of fan those, of the pigeon those, trapping. <laughs> you know, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm actually going yeah. to get one. <laughs> but I mean, you know, to Steve's point though, who is a business? If, are we going to require, if we're requiring everyone who's plowing for money to have a license, then are we going to be licensing people who are operating businesses that are operating under the table and that are not paying taxes? Mm -hmm. Are people who are not operating above board businesses going to be <coughs> driving around with city licenses on their trucks? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like I said, it's it's this is it's an enforcement tool that we that we have to use. Um, you know, if I guess someone could come up with an elaborate scheme, but it's you know. Um, then we would hit them with a with a fine for pushing snow. But I mean, it's just um, to me having as many tools as we can when it comes to public safety issues like this, the, the better off we are. Well, I would just propose if we were to keep the licensing uh, that it be a five dollar fee that uh, if they go to a seminar and uh, sign an agreement with the city and we list them as a business on our website that um, it's waived. Mm -hmm. I'm completely open to having, you know, whether it's, you know, a sit down thing, whether it's something online that they do, you know, something so that um, we have an opportunity to educate them, you know, beyond just the city regulations. Um, but we, you know, if we are going to keep the licensing, we just need to keep it at a fee that they're actually going to comply so that we can keep track of, of who the folks are. I think we need to offer a benefit to the business. Um, yeah. That exposure, you know, like I said, again, on our city website, or mm -hmm. through, um, where we say these businesses know the rules in the city of Syracuse, and if you hire them, you know, they came to the seminar, they learned what standards we want uh, plowed. Maybe um, if you hire them, you won't be subject to, you know, you're less likely to be subject to the potential ticket that we may issue a homeowner mm -hmm. if that turns out how we change the sure. ordinance. You know, maybe you want to hire these people because they know better right. and they know how to plow in the city of Syracuse. And then we could work on changing the enforceability of the dumping law with holding homeowners, right. you know, as warnings or, or fines accountable. Right. I'm, so much pushback. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, speaking as a, as a property owner who's needed an electrician, I was glad that the city had uh, could give me a list of licensed electricians because everybody's brother-in-law is an electrician. Um, but having a license, I knew that this person knew what they were doing, they knew what the rules were, and that I had some sort of, you know, verification that this is a reputable business. And I think the same could apply to snowplow operators. Right. But, you know, if, if there are different, like I said, different, like, just, I don't want to get into the weeds, but, you know, plumbers and electricians have certain licenses because our, our homes, if you hire an electrician in your house, our house, homes are very close together. Mm -hmm. And if I take on a fire risk in my home by hiring someone's brother-in-law to do my work, I may burn down my next-door neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, a, more of a, a reason for that as, than, you know, a guy who's doing my sidewalk. Yeah, I mean, Probably. as someone who's taking those calls, and I'm sure you have two people, you would think their house is on fire with how upset they are with the right, behavior right. of their but neighbor's snowplow operator, but I understand yeah. what but, you're saying. But with that... Of the last you know several years that I've been on the council when I get those phone calls they also come with emails and text messages of a picture of mm -hmm. the car and the license plate so I, I mean I guess th that's always sort of been my argument of what's the purpose when when I get that it's a neighbor that's out there and they're taking pictures and they have no problem going out and snapping a picture of that you know license plate mm -hmm. or the car so I mean, you know, or the side of the car with the name of the business and the phone number. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's sort of, again, I, my whole argument with all of this is what are we actually getting from that license? Mm -hmm. I understand that, you know, we're able to track it, but what are we tracking? Well, I mean, wouldn't it be great if we know the name of that business to say uh, we have evidence that you're breaking these ordinances, your license is revoked, you're no longer allowed to do business in the city because you can't follow these rules, whereas we just keep issuing you tickets. 
But but again, are, do we have that list? Do we have the list of properties that you know that snowplow driver is? That's is, I mean, I think that could be another amendment to the ordinance. I'm you know to add. I mean, they're required to be able to provide that to us. Um, you know when we have a conversation with them or you know confront them as they're doing it about. Um, about breaking the city ordinances, they're required to provide us with a list of. And, and I do realize how ridiculous I sound. No, you don't. Footnote, you know, be, from from one extreme. Please, to as I said, I'm making my career on private snowplow operators. Let's but not I, I talk about ridiculous. Really, I mean, of all the ridiculous of, things we've heard you say, Carney. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess my my point is, right now we're in the middle, and we don't we're doing nothing but collecting a fee, mm -hmm. I, I, and I truly believe that, and that's not. This administration, that's not just this council. We've been doing this since the 70s. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my father, when he was on the council, was a part of it. I, I get it. It's it's just sort of been this no man's land of we're not doing anything mm -hmm. with it. So either let's scrap it or let's actually do something with and it. I, and I'm arguing for the latter, that instead of just collecting the money, then, let's do then, something. Then let's actually do something with um, it. If that's, if that's what we're going to do, either I'm all on board with getting rid of it or it, when we address this two weeks ago, mm -hmm. it should have been addressed of us what are we doing? Where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that then because it required separate legislation. But that, but that was my point then. Let's, let, we should have sat down all together and reviewed what are we doing, why are we doing it, rather than just having something thrown on our agenda saying, well, we got to address the fine because it's less than the actual fee. Sure. I, I was under the impression that when we bring things to the agenda, this is our idea and the council is open to providing any feedback that they would like to what our proposal is. So if these concerns were present at that time, we would have been open to using that opportunity to, you for know, while record, we have this for open. For the record, I did bring these. For the things. record, I was I was actually out of town. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the record, I, I brought up I brought up several things. Fair that enough. I'm bringing up today mm -hmm. that never got touched. So mm -hmm. again, that's kind of my issue with all. Of it. That's yeah. Fair. So going forward, we could probably do better communication wise, and I think we will. Um, I'll, I'll probably, I th I'm not sure where this is going to go at this time as this ordinance stands and as it we're, it's already snowing, I'm still really under the impression that as it's written right now, I, I don't see how keeping this, this license requirement and the, and the fine in place for this year is uh, beneficial to the people of the city of Syracuse. And I think that if we want to rewrite something and uh, or create something uh, new. You know, we can't leave it in place as it is right now, and and sort of, I don't want to, can't think of a better word than penalize, but you know, plow drivers this winter, mm -hmm. as cur current as today, you know, um, for doing business in the city of Syracuse. So I can't say as though I, I've really got had a huge change of heart. I I do agree with you that. Being able to revoke a license from someone would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. I just want to get to a place where we're uh, supporting small business, uh, su supporting an honest day's work for some of our, our people uh, in the city, um, where we're working hand in hand with the community and creating something that actually benefits people. So I I'm gonna, I'm just to yeah. go back to the, I think this has come up a few times because there is this. Councilor Driscoll asked, does this give you any benefit to having this freedom to, or I don't know, ability to write tickets or whatever for the license? And I don't think it's just that. It's always got to be the value of that compared to the cost of the, the burden placed on people. So when we did the dog law, we didn't say all dog owners come in for a license. Well, we do require a license. We don't say come in. <laughs> we, don't, we didn't, like, in tandem with that, say come in to that educate yourselves that. As part of this license, we're going to educate you on not tying your dog up outside for 35 minutes, right? right? Which I, and I think that goes back to it might make more sense to target, I also think, the property owners. And then if it happens once, I'm sure there would be a system where the person who is elderly on a fixed income who gets it says, yeah, I fired my plow driver. And I got a new guy who doesn't plow it into the road. Or I pass the fine along to him because I, it's not yeah, fair for me to pay. He paid it because he didn't know about it, and we don't do it that way anymore. But there, there has to be like other levels to it. So yeah, I think we need to have another committee meeting under DPW to really dig into that law. But I think to do a better job of enforcing that law, we need to add a educational component to our licensing, whether that be like I had 
suggest or something like you know that where we require them to go to a seminar and then we credit them for having taken the time to sit down to pay attention and learn the laws of the city of Syracuse and you know with some sort of preferred status mm -hmm. in the city of Syracuse um, rather than just charging them and making sure that they read that you know two lines in there you know mm -hmm. um, but I think if we step up the educational side then we can move towards the homeowner offering them a, 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 a an educated plow driver list people who you know you can be pretty sure if you hire these people you're not going to get that ticket mm -hmm. that we're maybe going to issue homeowners possibly because um, they know because they mm -hmm. know the rules mm -hmm. um, but I think that that whole the whole license or even if it's not a license if it's a certification or if it's a, an endorsement or whatever it may be from the city to plow drivers um, needs to be addressed the educational component has to be in there before we start revamping even the enforcement law and the illegal dumping for the dumping one it's my understanding that DPW supervisors right now can write tickets for that and I don't think that has anything to do with a license right like if yeah you they, get those complaints yeah there. they can um, you know and and what we've talked about because I think at least I think when it initially passed the it was that you know DPW would hop out of the truck and knock on the guy's window and be like you know I'm issuing you this ticket um, and in conversations with the police department it's our DPW truck drivers are not really trained and I don't I don't know that I necessarily want them um, getting out of their trucks at you know four o'clock in the morning to knock on somebody's window to issue them a ticket but what we've talked about is if they observe this happening you know either to take a photo or they can um, work with the police department to address that to address that issue with that um, you know getting their decal number if they have a license or their license plate number or whatever it is um, to try and address that so and, and I still I so I okay so DPW can't really do it the police are busy and have limited staff and say they don't have staff and all the time in other places in other environments talking about police we talk about creating alternatives to calling the police like we're not calling but having capacity for like middle of the people well, I mean, who are not quite police who can come and de-escalate things and all that right so why would we bring police in but police to, like, does have a division of ordinance enforcement it's not like somebody's choosing whether to solve a murder or go um take it for snow plows yeah, you know like of, we should eliminate some of the 61 units from the police department too, so there, they don't have there is stuff. there is a i mean lieutenant schultz you know better than i do but there is an ordinance enforcement there are ordinances that the police department well and and Councilor thompson would know there are ordinances that the police department is either solely responsible for enforcing or primarily responsible for enforcing and and you know um and this is one of them it's not a an, an enormous staff but um, you know, Carlos Ro Officer Romaine is somebody who, who does a lot of this um, to go have conversations about, you know, people violating ordinances. So we've been uh, at this for almost an hour, so I want to try and wrap up the meeting, and I want to thank you very much for coming. No, thank you. The administration for coming and having this important conversation. Just as you, as you, we continue to talk about the, the ordinance, and now I don't know which side I'm on, licensing or, or compliance, but just with Pick the conversation. Pick a side, Sharon. Pick right. a side. <laughs> <laughs> just with a conversation again, about homeowners, just thinking about it, pushing the snow, blocking sidewalks is a public safety issue. Absolutely. And And coming down, I go to Genesee to Fayette, and the kids that are on the buses and down that street every morning, in the road because of sidewalks. Um, so the idea about the licensing for electricians because the houses are closer and we need to make sure that they're following <laughs> rules. I see the same thing for the pushing of snow. Right, but that does not a licensing issue. That's a compliance to our Right, snow. I didn't know yeah. which side I was on. <laughs> I but just as we talk about in holistically well, to... and, the, and the, because we can't separate the two. Mm. It, we have to. I mean, in a comprehensive yeah, conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have yeah, to think about it holistically, about. exactly. Because the goal it, yeah. is for this yeah. license to impact that law. Absolutely. We just aren't there. So but I just want, just want us to think about Thank the impact you. on the homeowner yeah. when they're hiring somebody in the same thing. And a senior citizen, getting, you know, we have to walk through that whole. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I would say that some of it um, 
can be changed, I believe, if, if you did a um, public uh, broadcast and you, you, you did along the lines of these are people that are if, if signed up with that the city that are, that are, yeah, and, and that are uh, um, you know, licensed by the city in order to do this. Or certified by the city. Uh, however I, it wants to, however it would be. But, but, but and, and at the same time have, it, have in active enforcement by the ordinance of those drivers, they're not hard to pick up. I mean, everybody's going to just at, at one o'clock in the afternoon go hit all the bars where the plow, plow trucks are sitting out in front of now <laughs> and go in and say, "Hey, who hasn't uh, got their licenses here? And let's get the licenses and well, get them see. on." I mean, do an active thing to to, to get the people to we could also to people sign up. And once they haven't, once you've got people that are signed up, then you could hold it against the others, and it would actually have some. We can also keep on that list in red people who have been ticketed for illegal you know right. we can have a good just real quick similarly the mwbe while we use that for city contracts many times people are also using that list because they know that those are rep you know those are companies that have yeah. the acquired licenses and whatever for private work as well mm -hmm. I, I still think there's some segment of the population that are compliers and some segment probably yeah. equal in size that are non-compliers and the people who are compliers they don't shove a pile of snow in front of the sidewalk on a busy street and there it's going to be the compliers who will go get a license and the people who do that i would bet money every time they're not going to get a license and, and that's the case right now they don't go get a license we've we had it they don't do it like who participate in the educational part i really actually i have to be somewhere at one o'clock <laughs> <laughs> so you want to bring us a i feel like we could talk about this forever i really appreciate everybody giving us your time and yeah. having this important conversation. And I think we're all in it for the right reasons. I think we all want what's best for the city and for the community, and I think we'll get there. Councilor Carney, say it. Come on. Thank you. <laughs>